This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to the Middle East where the sun's shining, there's palm trees, oasis. We're going there because we are Aladdin with the magic lamp. And today we're looking at Tales and Game Series. This is one of the many games that have been coming out in the series from Yellow. It's for two to five players. It's meant to be playing with families and children. Uh, it says the ages is uh, seven and up. So let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. Like all the other games in the Tales of Game series, it comes with the rules, but it also comes with the story that you could read to your child. Here we have it set up for three players. Each player is going to get a die, a little board, and a random gem to start with. Now, over the course of the game, they're going to be trying to go through bronze, silver, or gold chests. The game goes through three different phases. First, they're going to put their hand around here so nobody can see it, and they are going to choose which side of the die they want, and they're going to choose which chest they're going to go into secretly. Once everyone's done, everybody will reveal. So on the count of three, you'd say one, two, three, everyone will reveal. If you see anybody else that has the same number die as you, you will then try to rub, be the first to rub the genie's lamp. So there's a speed element here, the first person of those two to touch that would get to go into the lamp. If there's multiple players that have different dice that are the same, then there could be more than one player getting wishes. So the first player, let's say, would, would, would reveal this and it says, hey, my stomach hurts, I've eaten something rotten, and make another wish if you can. If you don't like this wish, which we don't like, we could put it to the bottom and draw another one. We get up to a second wish. Move any player's die to another chest without changing the value. Ooh, that might be interesting. But let's say I'm pressing my luck. I don't want this one either. I put this one at the bottom of this. So this means the third one I'm going to be stuck with because you only get three chances to make a wish. I'm going to pull this one. It says, oh, you can steal one card from another player, but it can't be a talisman or, or a card of a complete set. So I could do this. I would do what it says to do. And then I would put this down on the bottom. Next, we could start at each chest and players would draw. So nobody went to the bronze chest, so nobody would draw here. We then go to the silver chest. There's two players that tried to go to the silver chest. This guy was greedy because he wanted to be able to take up the six cards, but this player was less greedy. The lower number gets to go into that chest. If they were both the same number, neither of them would get to go. Uh, it's always the lowest number, and if there isn't a lowest number, meaning it's tied or there's nobody there, nobody goes. So in this case, this player can draw up to three cards from this chest. So they would take one card and they would get a, ooh, it's a gem, that's nice. They would draw a second card. Ooh, this is a talisman, this is wild. You can place this on any of the gem colors and it acts as that gem, but you have to decide right when you get it. Look at this, this is a scorpion. Now, if you see that, that scorpion there, there's one of them. I used a three die. So right now I've drawn only one scorpion. I can draw up to three cards, which means I have one more card that I can draw. However, if I draw and there's two or more scorpions on it, because I would have a total of at least three and my die is three, I would bust and all these cards would go back in the treasure chest. Uh, but I'm going to push my luck. I'll go like this. Ooh, I got a second scorpion, but I just escaped out and this is sort of uh, a bracelet. So I would get to keep these because I did not bust. And then the player or the, that had the lowest number on the gold chest would do the same thing. If you bust, you would just get rid of the cards that you got only that round. Now this continues going through those rounds, as I, as I said, until one of the three chests brings up the sorcerer card. This card is basically the, shuffled into one of the last six cards in each of the decks, and that just means it's going to be the last round. And at the end of the game, you're going to count up your points. You're always going to get one point for every card. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine there. For any of the color of gems that I have the most of, meaning more than everybody else, I get five more points. So let's say I have the most red and the most green. That's five and five. That's ten. And so that's a 19 total points. Then if you have a full set of necklace, bracelet, and ring of the same type, these are all silver, uh, you'd get a certain amount of points. If it's bronze, you'd get six. Silver, you'd get eight. Gold, you'd get ten. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, interesting to note that all the silver jewelry comes from the silver chest and the bronze and gold from the respective chest. So at, if you see people going after certain types of jewelry, you can decide, oh, I think they're going after that chest and you can try to undercut them, go for something low if you think they're going to be greedy and so on and so forth. Also, there's only a certain amount of each color gem in each of these chests. So you might be focusing on a jewelry uh, type in one chest, but you're going to need to go to the other ones to try to get majorities of certain gem colors. 
Uh, some variants in the game, two players, you each get two dice and you play two, and you play the rest of the game pretty much the same way, but each player is playing with two dice. There's also a My Precious variant with this ring. If you have six on your die and you go through that entire chest without busting, you get to take this ring from the middle or from somebody else if they have it. You also get to go through the discard pile and grab any one card from that chest you want. And if you have this at the end, it's an additional five points. Now I've been a fan of this Tales and Game series since the first one, The Three Little Pigs. And in many of these games, I think three or four of them I've kept in my collection because they are great with children. Now I don't have children of my own, but I often have kids over here with friends and church and stuff. And there, there's plenty of people to play this with. And so I like to have these games there. Plus a lot of these are very interesting even for the adults to play. Sometimes they have regular rules and advanced rules. So how does this one stack up? Well, uh, much like this series, there's good mechanisms here. Um, there's actually a game. It's not like you're buying a child's game in a mass market store and it's just going to stink mechanically. There's actually some great mechanics here. You have, uh, you have uh, the aspect of uh, secretly saying which, which chest am I going for and trying to guess what the other player is going to do. You're looking at what they have over there and you're going, huh, okay, they're collecting a lot of the bronze sets. Uh, I'm, I, I'm working on bronze too. Probably we're going to go the same one. Do I, how greedy do I think that player is going to be? Is he going to go five, six, four? Should I try to undercut him or should I just fake him out and go for silver because you know what? I'm working on reds and there's probably not that many reds left in the bronze. I'm going to go over here. So there's that aspect of thinking about with that. Then there's that speed aspect, right? So you have, you have, you have uh, secret action selection. You have um, uh, speed of touching the genie lamp. And then you have the whole press your luck. So three different mechanisms that tie this together and they all work well together. Uh, there's also set collection. So there's another mechanism. In this simple, easy 20 games, there's a handful of mechanisms all working harmoniously together. Um, so if you're okay with the, the, the aspects that I find that people had the most problems with this, this game is people that don't like the speed aspect. That was probably the smallest aspect of this game, but it's there. If you don't like revealing and being the first one to touch someone, then this one might not be for you. But I think kids generally are faster than adults anyway, so they'll like it. It was mostly the adults that I played with that, that complained about that. Uh, so if you don't mind any of those mechanisms and you're looking for a good kids game, I think this is, this is definitely a good one. Uh, where does it land in that whole series? For me personally, it's probably about middle of the road, which by the way is not bad because this series is excellent for kids and a middle of the road game in this series is probably amazingly better than anything you'd buy them in a mass market store. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not going to beat out my three little pigs and, and you know, the, 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 the tortoise and the hare. Those are my two favorites, but it's not going to be as bad as say the little red riding hood that I like the least. Um, sort of in that middle of the road there, probably better than Baba Yaga. Probably about the same as the ant and uh, grasshopper somewhere around there. So good valiant effort, uh, lots of different mechanisms, but from me describing the different mechanisms, you should be able to tell whether this is for you or not. But in normal yellow fashion, art's awesome, production's awesome. It fits the theme, fits the game. Uh, and if you like this series, this is another one to check out. That's Aladdin and the Magic Lamp. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.